Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we are going to be breaking down the Sunday night football matchup between the Seattle Seahawks at the Arizona Cardinals. We are going to be discussing every aspect of the game, both how it affects the NFL, as well as how it affects fantasy football for 2020. So before I get into this video, I'd like to ask that if you guys do at any point inside of this video end up having a great time, you end up enjoying, please make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, because not only is it free, I put out content every single day to help you guys win that 2000. 2020 fantasy football championship so without further ado let's get into it Sunday night football recap between the Seahawks and the Arizona Cardinals Arizona ended up winning this game 37 to 34 but the tale of this game was a back and forth tug of war match now if I'm being honest with you it seemed like Seattle had this one in the bag at the end of the game when the game went to overtime the Seattle Seahawks won the coin toss and typically a lot of the time when it's two good teams against each other where both teams don't really have the greatest of defense, the team that wins the coin flip typically wins. The team that wins the coin flip has a supreme advantage in the NFL due to the fact that if you get the ball and you score a touchdown there, you win the game. So Seattle had the opportunity to do that. They didn't do it. There was a back and forth affair. And then Zane Gonzalez gets the shot to kick that field goal to win the game. They ice their own kicker. He misses. Seattle gets the ball, pick from Russell Wilson, and then the Arizona Cardinals end up winning the game from a Zane Gonzalez uh, field goal kick, which, which was amazing. But I'm going to break down this whole game. Obviously, we're not just going to talk about the end of the game. So for the Seattle Seahawks, Russell Wilson, 33 of 50 for 388 yards, three touchdowns, and three INTs. Now, I understand you might read three INTs and start thinking, oh, Nick, is Russell Wilson washed up the complete and utter opposite? This guy was making plays all games long, both through the air and with his legs. He had six carries for 84 yards in this game, gashing the Arizona Cardinals defense and splitting them like Moses split the Red Sea. For Kyler Murray, the exact same thing happened. 34 completions on 48 attempts for 360 yards, three touchdowns and one INT, as well as 14 carries for 67 yards and one total touchdown. So Russ had three touchdowns. Uh, Kyler Murray had four total touchdowns in this game. Kyler Murray completely and utterly outplayed Russell Wilson in this matchup. Kyler Murray ate this prime time up like his name was Ezekiel Elliott and the cook who normally is cooking it up Russell Wilson did struggle in this game now the three interceptions does not mean Russell Wilson played like complete and utter shit I only say Kyler Murray outplayed him because when it counted he was not throwing the picks like Russell Wilson was now obviously there's something else to talk about in this game besides the quarterbacks obviously the wide receivers but one running back in this game both running backs in the game both starters end up going down in this game Chris Carson 5 for 34 as well as one for seven in the receiving game ends up going down in this game was questionable return never ended up showing back up into the game but the more severe injury at least in my opinion it seems like Chris Carson may be fine after the bye next week I not they don't have a bye next week the Cardinals have a bye next week actually but Kenyon Drake ends up getting hurt in this game 14 for 34 as well as one for seven in the receiving game very sad for Kenyon Drake. It seemed like an injury where he is going to be out for a decent amount of time they panned to him on the sideline which is just so fucked up when you think about it, when they pan to the side of the field and you just see Kenyon Drake fucking tearing it up like he just watched the most horrific movie that you can watch and it completely scarred him. That's what it looked like. I feel very sorry for Kenyon Drake, obviously, and I hope for a speedy recovery from him, but I feel like he is going to be missing a significant amount of time. And with that, if Chase Edmonds is available in your league, now there is going to be a waiver wire video tomorrow for you guys to watch or Tuesday, actually, I should say, because I'm recording this on Monday in the morning I guess because it's 12 a.m. after the game ended it's going to come out right when I finish recording this so the waiver video will come out tomorrow but man oh man does Chase Edmonds seem to be in an excellent spot due to this injury he seems like he has taken a complete and utter fucking stranglehold of this backfield with Drake out five for 58 as well as seven for 87 in the receiving game, 7-for-7, seven seven. beautiful out of Chase Edmonds. This guy looks like the real fucking deal, and with Kenyon Drake likely out of the equation, obviously the worst way for it to happen due to injury bodes well for Chase Edmonds. But now it's time to go look at the Seattle receiving game because something beautiful happened in this game. A NFL record for the Seattle Seahawks, most receiving yards in a game, Tyler Lockett, of the Seattle Seahawks for the Seattle Seahawks, 200 yards on 15 receptions and 19 total targets. Yep. You heard that correctly. This motherfucker had 19 targets and 15 receptions. I told all of you guys last week in the trade target video, trade for Tyler Lockett, and people were panicking. People were trying to trade away Tyler Lockett due to the fact that they thought Antonio Brown may be coming. 
humongous panic on Tyler or Tyler Lockett, and this guy completely fucking opened the Arizona Cardinals' ass and went to absolute town, giving him a nice Remy. So Tyler Lockett looked excellent in this one. There's a reason why this guy is touted as one of the better wide receivers in the NFL. And then people started doubting him. There was no fucking reason to doubt him. He was inevitably going to take an L and then bounce back like his name was Big Sean. Three tutties in this game. Every single one of Russell Wilson's touchdowns went to him. So obviously, that has a cause. The cause was Tyler Lockett plays good. But the effect is DK Metcalf takes a nice steamy shit right on your chest. Two receptions, 23 yards for zero total touchdowns on five targets. Now, DK Metcalf did save the game at one point. It seemed like he completely saved the game. Fucking Russ throws a pick. DK Metcalf runs down the field at Lightning McQueen speed. This motherfucker reached Mach 3, running down the defender who picked off the ball. It was one of the most beautiful plays I've ever seen from a defender, but it wasn't an actual defender doing it. It was fucking DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf played very well in this game, was given the opportunity. He just did not end up scoring because he scores a touchdown and they call it back due to a block from David Mo- David Moore. So this game really could have went either way. Had that penalty not have been called, the Seattle Seahawks would have won this game. The Seattle Seahawks in this game ended up falling 5-1 and one, and the Cardinals advanced to 5-2. and two. For the other receiving in this game, we can obviously talk about DeAndre Hopkins. 12 targets, 10 receptions, 103 yards, and one touchdown. That's what DeAndre Hopkins does. This guy is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL and with a quarterback that looks as poised in the pocket who can roll out at any opportunity. No no matter how many men are coming to eat this man alive, to break him across their fucking knee because this guy is five foot five. And real quick, what type of fucking dumbass put on the screen that Kyler Murray was 5'10"? I don't believe that for a second. This guy looks like he needs to get on a fucking step stool to brush his teeth in the morning. But with that said, DeAndre Hopkins has been absolute electricity this season. 10 receptions, 103 yards, and one total touchdowns. And Christian Kirk... The complete and utter Undertaker gif for Christian Kirk. This guy looked like a bag of dog shit last season. He looked like a complete and utter bag of dicks. Now, 5 for 37 and 2 touchdowns in this game. This guy is a scoring machine. This guy scores every single game. I don't know how he does it. He just gets lucky with the ladies or something because this guy's always fucking scoring. Charlie Sheen style. 5 of 37 for 2 total touchdowns for Christian Kirk. An amazing game out of him. I thought, you know what? Maybe we have to wait to see if Christian Kirk is the real deal. He's got to do it for a bunch of games in a row, and he has done it. He has proved my trust. Now, obviously, that next week they have a bye, so we won't see this team next week, but I am very, very surprised that the Arizona Cardinals are this good. The Seattle Seahawks are still very good. 5-1 and one is no record to scoff at. That makes the Pittsburgh Steelers the number one team now in the NFL, the only undefeated team in the NFL. So let me know what you guys thought about this game. Did you question the play calling late in the game when the Arizona Cardinals elected to kick it on second down instead of just rushing it 7 million times down the deceased Seattle Seahawks defense's throat? But obviously, that had no effect on the game didn't because they still ended up winning the game but at the time I was really questioning what the fuck Cliff Kingsbury was thinking so let me know what you guys thought about the game as a whole let me know if this game completely fucked up your fantasy night it spoiled your night like the song by Post Malone so have a great rest of your guys day I love each and every single one of you guys we're almost at 10,000 subscribers it means the world to me that we've gotten this far and I'll see you motherfuckers in the morning with another banger of a video as always good boy